Hey, how's it going, runner? Coach Kyle here, and today you're going to learn about some recent publications that came out in the literature that I think you'll find informational, potentially helpful. Topics include guided meditation, the keto diet, um, how endurance events affect or may not affect your immune system, and intermittent fasting. If you don't know, I'm Coach Kyle, and I work primarily with plant-based runners all over the world to improve their running and their lives through implementing sustainable running habits, easy to do strength work, optimizing their diet, their gear, implementing mindfulness practices, and bringing it all together with great motivation and accountability without being asked where you get your protein from. So, like I said, we have a lot of information to cover, so let's get started. This first one was really interesting because it was about guided meditation and how that affected patient well-being after a surgery. And I liked this because I do guided meditation or uh, you know, not very guided meditation myself most mornings for 10 or 15 minutes. And I put it in the calendars of my clients once a week, sometimes more. And I like hearing that uh, oftentimes my clients, they say, oh, I've always wanted to try meditation or I've, I've tried meditation and I just couldn't make it stick. And they enjoyed having it right in their calendar. So this study had 60 participants who were given a guided meditation, an imagery, an imagery meditation before and immediately after and for two and three days after a surgery. And this was, this is, it's amazing that, uh, just doing this this guided type meditation it lowered it improved their wellness after surgery so the control group just had the standard care practices afterwards but the participants the patients that had the standard care plus meditation experienced less vomiting less anxiety and improved sleep with the guided meditation so Pretty cool. Have you ever thought about or maybe tried implementing meditation into your, your, your general like daily life? Let me know in the comments. And if it's something that you want more information about, maybe you want more information about my meditation practices, again, leave me a comment and maybe I'll make a video about it in the future. So next up, we have a study that came out looking at the immune system uh, macronutrient carbs, fats, protein intake, and how that affected uh, or, or didn't affect changes in the immune system after a, an endurance event. And it's likely that if you're watching this, you're a runner, and you've probably heard that maybe after a big event like a marathon or a triathlon, your, your immunity is compromised. So there has been research saying, yeah, that's true. But on the flip side, there is some research that says maybe it's not so much related to the actual doing of the marathon, but it's that you were, you traveled, you went to an expo, and you did a marathon with 20, 30, 40,000 people at it. And so you were simply traveling and with a lot more people than you normally would be. And that's why you got sick. Not so much that you, you ran 26 miles. So what did this study have to say? So this 10 week study had participants consume a protein shake or a carbohydrate shake every day and the researchers looked at how that affected different immune responses and different immunological uh, factors. The participants were asked to take this shake on their rest days, their easy days, but also immediately after big workouts or any workout for the day. So the results were that there was not a large change in the primary immune marker from baseline to the end of the 10 week study in any of these participants. They did find a small but statistically insignificant decrease, trend of decrease um, in one immunological marker for the carbohydrate group at 10 weeks compared to baseline, but a greater acute or short-term decrease in this concentration immediately after exercise in the protein group. The protein group did experience an overall decrease in uh, the lipocyte, which is a form of white blood cell count over the course of the study. And the, the results, or what the, what the researchers kind of concluded was that protein itself wasn't enough to kind of preserve or reduce the effect on the immune system. They recommended a protein plus carb shake 
to be a little better for kind of preserving that immune system in these triathletes that participated in the study. Next up, we have some information about the keto diet and its effects on athletic performance. And I've talked a little bit about the keto diet in the past, and I'm not a fan in general of the keto diet. I mean, I'm, a, I'm a high carb vegan, but, um, and, I, and I'll get to this, that I think whatever the dietary eating pattern you choose, as long as it's focused on whole foods, reducing junk food, and it works for you, it works for you. And this wasn't just a single st study, but it was a literature review. And there were 17 studies that kind of met the parameters to be, to be included in this review. Total participants in all the studies were about 327, and they ranged from, I think, 21 days to 84 days in duration. Overall, in this review, there was no strong or consistent evidence for or really against the keto diet as it came to physical performance. For endurance outcomes, there were 10 studies that reported no difference between groups uh, for the keto diet or the mixed macronutrient diet, which is mainly more just like a standard eating pattern. There were 10 studies that found no real benefit and three found a slight decrease in performance. When it came to lower body strength, there were four studies that found no real difference between keto and mixed macronutrient eating patterns. There were two studies that found a higher, um, you know, better performance in lower, lower body strength. And there was one study that found a decrease in performance with the keto diet. And when it comes to one rep max strength performance, there were nine studies included. Seven of them reported um, no change and two studies reported a decrease in performance. And finally, we have intermittent fasting, time-restricted eating. And if you don't know what intermittent fasting is, it's when you, you know, basically you skip breakfast and you don't eat until maybe lunch or so. Oftentimes you'll see you have a feeding window or a fasting window, and oftentimes you'll see this feeding window is maybe like six hours long, and the fasting window is a lot longer. Most people might eat, say, breakfast at 7 a.m. and they might eat uh, lunch and then maybe dinner is at 5, 6, or 7 p.m. If you're intermittent fasting, you might not eat until noon and you might have your last meal of the day at 6. So you have a long fasting window and a short, more narrow feasting window. So this trial had 46 participants. They were obese adults and they had three groups. One group just ate ad libitum whenever, whatever they wanted. One group had a four hour feasting window where they ate between three, four, five, six, and 7 p.m. And the other group had a six hour feasting window. Researchers wanted to know what differences there would be between the control group and the intermittent fasting groups and between the two different feasting windows. And the two feasting windows, the participants could really eat whatever they wanted but they were all uh, tracking what they ate, and the researchers looked at body measurements, vitals, blood parameters, etc. So what was really cool was that the intermittent fasters tended to eat about 500 fewer calories per day. And keep in mind, they were all three groups were really eating whatever they wanted. The, uh, the two fasting groups just couldn't eat outside of that, that window. Other than the reduced calorie intake, they also had improved fasting insulin, oxidative stress went down, insulin resistance went down, and their body weight went down. So this is a nice hack if you're looking to improve your body composition by reducing your calorie intake. I myself, I intermittent fast three, five days a week maybe, and I don't force it, but you know, if I, if I wake up, I get some coffee, and I'm just in the run coaching zone, I can work and I, I'm not even hungry until 11 o'clock, noon, sometimes even later. But if I do a morning run or a morning workout, I will certainly eat, I'm gonna fuel that. But if I just have an easy 45 minute jog for the day and I'm doing it in the afternoon or the evening, I might just not eat until noon, but I still get plenty of calories. I'm just eating them all within a certain time window. And for myself, I don't necessarily do it for, for dieting, trying to lose weight. I do it because, and many people also find that 
and they just feel better, more energized, more energetic, more productive in the morning if they just hold off on breakfast until later in the day. And it might be that for this, this, um, this productivity and this morning energy, even if you, you maybe don't really fast m that much, but you just don't eat breakfast until 10 in the morning. We're not talking like not eating until one or three, but maybe just 10 in the morning, you might find that you have a more energetic, more productive morning. And before you go, check out this video up here for more information about studies I think you'll find interesting. Give this video a like if you found it helpful or informative. It really helps out the channel. Subscribe if you want notifications on future videos just like this one. And as always, you keep running, I'll keep coaching.